Hey, Dub Nation, it's Steve Kerr, and you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. And you're about to be listening to that man himself, but it would have been weird if he had said you're listening to me. Um, but you're about to be right here on uh, Willard and Dibs. It is that time where we welcome in the head coach of the Dub, Steve Kerr, is brought to you by Xfinity at home or on the go. You'll get the fastest internet to all your devices and presented by Great Clips. I'll be heading there this weekend in sports. Success is about team effort, and the same is true for your hair. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, man. Great to have you tonight. Uh, what is uh, what is any update on Steph Curry that you can share with us? Well, we'll uh, we'll know more tomorrow. Uh, the good news is the uh, the MRI was uh, was was basically fine. Um, but injuries like these, it, it sort of takes a, a couple of days to really uh, evaluate Steph, see where he is, and and uh, we'll have we'll have a better feel, and we'll we'll have a report out tomorrow. So we we got to wait till then. Okay, are are you officially able to rule him out for tomorrow yet, or no? Uh, it, it's unlikely he would play, but we haven't made any determination yet until until tomorrow. Steve, what's your takeaway from the last 48 hours? Because I know those of us here on this side of the microphone, it was unbelievable joy mixed by confusing sadness. Where are you at after <laughs> the win and the loss, Steve? Help us out here, Steve. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think uh, our team is is definitely capable of uh, doing big things. I mean, that the Milwaukee win was was really impressive. We, we showed our depth. Our young guys showed how far they've come. Um, and last night, uh, I actually thought we played well enough to win. Uh, but I give Chicago a ton of credit. They they made uh, a lot of tough shots. Um, they made big shots. And I, I thought the biggest thing was uh, DeRozan just getting to the line uh, 11 times. Th- those were killers for us. And, and uh, you know, I, I still like where we are um, as a team. I think we're growing. I think we're getting better. But uh, there's no doubt that was, a, that was a tough loss last night. Coach, you guys have been through a lot of different twists and turns this year. So I get that this record – uh, spans all kinds of different circumstances. That said, I think you're a better team than 17 and 16 at home. Why? Why? Why is that record not better in your own building? I have no idea. Just like uh, I have no idea why last year we couldn't win a game on the road, uh, and this year we've been a great road team. It, it, it's tough to figure this stuff out. Um, I do think that. Um, you know, the, the NBA now is so uh, three-point shot dominant. Um, you know, a night like last night, I mean, Chicago's not a great three-point shooting team, um, but they made 16 of them. So they, they had a they had a big night from three. We struggled. You know, we made 11 of them. We had a lot of openings, a um, lot of good looks, but we just didn't knock shots down. And I hate to, to oversimplify it, but... Um, you know, oftentimes it, it really does come down to who makes shots, who doesn't. And, uh, you know, it, it's um, there's a random nature to this stuff, too. We were lights out against Milwaukee, and we cooled off last night. And win one, lose one. Yeah, the old uh, it's a make-or-miss league is something that we all lean on. But it last night kind of uh, puts that into into a definite uh, front front burner as mm-hmm. far as the fact that you didn't make shots, and, and they did. I want to ask about Andrew Wiggins and, and his return and – where he is fitting into the rotation. He only played 15 minutes last night. Is it a case of him not being fit after 10 days off, or is it just not not flowing for him right now? No, it's more more the 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 the, uh, the fact that he missed uh, eight or 10 days and um, and wasn't r- really ready to go uh, long minutes. And so we wanted with the back to back, we purposely kept his minutes down to help him. Kind of get back in the groove, and I would expect his minutes to go back up from here on. Steve Kerr with us here on Willard and Dibs. Speaking of minutes, of course, which uh, it's, it feels like it comes up every week, Coach, but but Moses Moody now back into the rotation. What have you seen from him the next uh, last two nights? And as Andrew's minutes go back up, what what do you think happens with Moses? Well, Moses will still get minutes. He'll continue to play. Uh, 
you know, he's he's really he played so hard and he made so many hustle plays. Uh, I think he's been great defensively, you know, since he's been in the rotation the last couple of weeks. And I think the more he plays, the more comfortable he'll get, you know, shooting the three as well. So, um, you know, the real change to the rotation, as you've noticed, was was um, taking Dario and and Looney uh, out, playing Trace Jackson Davis more, playing Moses more. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to approach things that way. Um, although we have to obviously get a feel for how long Steph will be out because that can change things as well. About Looney, he had a streak of 290 consecutive, and then last night it was a DNP. Was that something that you explained to him before the game that it wasn't maybe going to continue or after the game, or is this completely a non-story between you and Kavon? Well, we talked about this, you know, last week I, I, I went to Loon and talked to him about um, Trace, you know, taking over that role. And I told him, you know, how, how much pride that uh, I have in his streak. And I knew how much pride he had. In it. And I, I had a similar one as a, as a player that, you know, that I took great pride in. Um, but, um, you know, bottom line for me is, um, you know, we've committed – to giving those minutes to trace and it didn't feel right to me to just for the sake of the streak, you know, throw a loon out there for a couple of minutes. I, I didn't think that was um, fair. You know, it's almost patronizing in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the thing with loon is he's, he's a great pro the streak. What, what it represents is what's really important is that he's available every single night. And, you know, the number is just the number. Um, but he's ready. Uh, we're going to need him again for sure. We're going to need him again to certain matchups in the playoffs. I know what he could do, and and I know how professional he is. Uh, and having said all that, I feel terrible about um, you know breaking that streak because I know it meant a lot to him. Coach, uh, obviously we've already asked you about Steph, and so there's nothing official there. But let's draw on your experience of just in theory when he's out. How how does that change the lineup a little bit, and what what how much can Chris Paul do in a situation like that? Well, that's what we have to figure out. Is you know we found this starting lineup um, maybe a month or so ago with uh, adding you know, J.K. and Brandon. Um, so we've got to determine is this just as simple as plugging Chris into Steph's spot or. Is that combination um, so much different that we need to rethink it and maybe change another spot as well? And uh, I've been thinking about that all day. I've been watching tape. I've been looking at numbers, uh, talking to assistant coaches, and um, still haven't made up my mind um, how we're going to go about uh, putting the starting group together because it, it obviously affects uh, all the sub patterns as well. And so we're going to have to figure that out and, and – um, you know, assuming Steph doesn't play, then, um, you know, we've got to make sure we put the best combinations on the floor, give ourselves the best possible chance to win. Might Clay be a candidate to go back in the lineup? Because like you, Steve, I've been looking at numbers and tape uh, virtually all day other than doing this little radio show, and I, I noticed that the Kaminga-Paul-Thompson trio tends to be very productive. So could a reemergence of Clay in the starting lineup possibly be top of mind for you? It's absolutely a consideration, although I'm, I will say I really like Clay coming off the bench. I think he's looked fantastic. I think he's uh, grown comfortable in the role. And, um, you know, I don't really want to move him around, but if if, if that's what it takes uh, to, to round out the best five, um, then, then we'll do it. Um, but I've got, again, we've got to do, you know, more research, give it more thought, talk to some of the players, and, you know, make a decision by tomorrow night, obviously. Steve, last time you talked to us, I think uh, you're about to, or maybe it was a couple times ago, uh, you guys were about to play the Clippers, and Kawhi was out, and I thought you said something interesting with the whole idea of you hate it when the other team's best player is out. So no Wembenyama tomorrow night, so that really bums you out, I guess, huh? <laughs> Uh, you put me on the spot here, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's. Um, I, I think you guys know what I mean. I mean, you, you've you've seen these letdown games, you know, um, over the years. I, but I think they, you, you can feel what what's a potential letdown game, what's not. And uh, you know, if Steph is out, which I would expect to be the case, um, 
you better believe there's not going to be a letdown. I mean, we, we know where we are, 20 games left. Uh, we've got a lot on the line. Um, we, we've, we've got to take care of business. And so tomorrow's a big game, regardless of who's out there for San Antonio. Looks to me that uh, Draymond Green is back to where he was, obviously before the suspension, not just because he's you know back vociferously defending himself against the officials, but playing with a physicality, but also restraint. How pleased are you, not only after last night's triple-double, but in general, about the real return of Draymond Green? Draymond has just been awesome. I mean, really, I, I could not ask for... Uh, a better return since the suspension in terms of his approach, uh, his uh, aggressiveness, his intensity, and then, of course, his uh, his ability to walk the line and not cross it. So um, he's been great, and it's no coincidence that our record is so good since he came back. Coach, how do you handle it when a rookie ends up with the ball in his hands down two with seconds to go and misses a shot that he thinks he should have made? Oh, that's just, uh, you know, that's just coaching. Those are conversations. Uh, the great thing with Brandon is that, um, he's fearless and, uh, he has a great ability to move on, uh, to the, to the next game. And, um, you know, he, this won't affect him at all. You know, he'll be, he'll be fine. I'm sure he had some sleepless time, you know, last night. Um, just like we all do after losses, but, uh, you know, I, I, I know Brandon, and, and he's got great confidence. And, you know, the thing that I think all young players eventually realize is that, uh, you know, there's nights where you're the hero, and there's nights where you're the GOAT, and and then there's an, uh, another game the next night, no matter what. And so you better move on quickly. And uh, the thing with Brandon is that um, we are incredibly lucky to have him, and he's He's had such a great rookie season. He's such a good player, and uh, so we're you know we'll we'll support him. And and I don't know how much he he needs of that anyway. You're listening to Steve Curry, and you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM, and HD One San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Just speaking of Brandon, 27 minutes last night feels like his minutes are going down just a little bit. Is that? perhaps because he's 62 games into a rookie year and not that he's hitting a rookie wall, that might be a bit too harsh, but are you finding that the 27 to 30 minute range is where he can perhaps be at his best? Not necessarily. I just think that, um, that we we're finally healthy. Uh, there aren't as many minutes to be had. So it's funny, you know, when we do this show or when I do press conferences or whatever, you know, I, I, I get asked all the time about, you know, as soon as somebody's not playing, it's like, well, why isn't so-and-so playing? But, you know, if you just do the math, we can't play everybody 30 minutes, you know? <laughs> do you have a number in your head? Because I, like, I think even last week you mentioned uh, at that time an 11-man rotation, which in the NBA you said was unheard of. You're now playing a little bit with 10. We'll see what's going on with Steph. But, like, as you push toward the postseason, is it more about the players or or is there a number in your head that you want to get to as far as a rotation? No, it's more about the players and the matchups. You know, um, Gary Payton is such an important player for us, you know, guarding the ball. And there's going to be certain games against certain teams. Maybe you're playing Sacramento and you you, know, you have to get him on De'Aaron Fox, something like that. Uh, maybe there's a different team you play against that uh, plays, you know, through the post more and, and doesn't have a ball-dominant guard. Maybe Gary doesn't play quite as much. So th those are the things you, you factor in and consider each game. And part of the consideration now is with Trace Jackson Davis, who – it feels like has to be in there. What has he shown you over the past month that has taken him from maybe being a situational sub to really a mainstay now? Well, it's it's mostly about just getting him more reps. You know, he, he's obviously a, a dynamic finisher uh, and shot blocker, and um, so that gives us a different look from uh, what we get from Draymond and and Loon. So. Uh, we're really just trying to ramp up his minutes to uh, to to get him up to speed uh, on you know the NBA uh, actions that he's going to see um, you know personnel all that stuff because we know we're going to need him in the playoffs 
And at the same time, you know, Loon's helped us hang banners. That, that guy has, you know, he, he knows the league. He knows playoff basketball. Um, we're going to need him, but I know I can count on him. So we're going to, we're going to have him ready. But, um, you know, for the time being anyway, um, we need, we need to ramp up Trace's minutes. And that's why we made that move. Coach, we all know your history with, uh, with Greg Popovich. Uh, you just signed a, an extension. You think he's got any more of those? How much longer do you think he's going to coach? Well, he just signed a five-year extension himself this past offseason. So, uh, right, but he's, he's like 75 years old. Well, he's still going strong and, and loves what he does. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, just because he signed for five years doesn't mean he's going to coach all five. But but uh, I know he loves it. I know he's still really good at it. And uh I think he'll keep going for for the foreseeable future, but um, yeah, it's it's always uh, always fun to connect with Pop when he comes to town. Yeah, are those are those games a little bit different uh, for you still? You no, know, we're so you know we've coached against each other for so long now that um, you know you, you don't think about that much. It's more just uh, you know the visit after the game or before the game uh, connecting. I'll, 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 you know, probably visit with him, you know, to talk a little bit about USA basketball, you know, this summer, ask him some, some advice on that front. And, um, you know, it's, it's always great to catch up. We've been, we've been close for, I guess, what, 25 years or so. Uh, so it's a, it's a long, long-term friendship. With the win Saturday, you cut his lead over you down to 872, Steve. <laughs> I'm on his heels. I'm yeah, right there. Yeah, I mean, if you win both ends of this, you know, all of a sudden it's 871, and maybe he's hearing footsteps, Coach. Yeah, he's going to hear footsteps for sure. I'm sure he's really <laughs> nervous about it. <laughs> uh, by the way, speaking of being nervous, are you nervous for this poker tournament tonight? Uh, no, because when, when you stink at poker and you have no expectations, there's really nothing to get nervous about. So, okay, yeah, but with that comment, are, are you sandbagging right now? Weeds, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, I honestly I play poker once a year, and that's uh, that's on this night. On the, you know, for benefiting the Warriors Foundation. So I uh, I pretend like I know what I'm doing, and I'm usually out in a couple hours. Coach Trace Jackson Davis was on with us earlier today, and he wanted us to uh, uh, send a little message. We have some comments about this poker tournament for you. You want you want to hear them? Yeah. All right. Here. All right. This is from Trace. <laughs> By the way, Trace, awesome. the, the the reason we knew about your poker tournament is Steve's coming on in an hour. Oh, is there anything that we can do to sort of help your strategy? Yeah, anything, throw him off. Right. Anything you want us to say to him on your behalf? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Or but just like I'm coming for him. Or like you know, <laughs> he's coming for. Him. Okay, I or, like or that. If you beat him, like how about thirty minutes a night, something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right, so he's uh, he he's targeting you tonight, Coach. Although you sound like you think you're an easy target. Yeah, I'm a pretty easy target. So uh, there's yeah, he, he doesn't have anything to worry about. Who's good on the team? Well, the 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 real card game uh, on the plane. Every road trip is uh, Chris, Steph, Draymond, and uh, Clay, oh. and uh, yeah, so that, that's that's the varsity card game. You know, so uh, I, I see a lot of money changing hands in that group, and uh, they, they, you know, I think I think both Steph and Draymond will take the night pretty seriously. Oh man, I would imagine Chris does too, considering how competitive he is. He takes, and, takes everything yeah. seriously, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Hall of, a Hall of Fame poker match right? up on the plane. I'd pay to watch that. You'd have to. Right? Yeah, yes, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Tap into that 401k. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Steve Curry here on Willard and Dibs. All right, uh, before you go, this is completely self-serving, um, but I teach a, a Cal Poly journalism class, and I'm bringing the whole dang class to the game tomorrow night, and they're all excited to be at your pregame press conference, and they're very nervous about maybe asking you a few uh, a few questions, and so maybe they might ask weird questions. I don't, I'm trying to like figure out how to coach them to talk to you. Is there anything off the table, on the table? What what should I tell them about you? 
Oh, pretty much anything's on the table. You know, you're you're the teacher, so you, you know you gotta you gotta show them the way. Like, if they want to ask you something though, that's like completely not about Spurs Warriors, is that okay? I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Then we might just do that. Exactly. We might just do all that. Right. Um, <laughs> all right, Coach. Great stuff. Great to have you. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Sounds good, guys. We'll see you. There it is. Steve Kerr with us here on Willard and Dibs.